recognize you. Come on. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye. You. <laughs> Hello, Duke. Nice to see you My again. Pleasure. My sit pleasure. Sit down, sit down. Ned, you haven't changed a bit. Well, it's good to be back out here. I got to tell you, we're very excited about, uh, about the uh, book at Playboy. That book, I don't know. I don't know half the... I seem to have, uh, you know, lost the motivation, the belief in it. You know what I'm really having trouble with? The serials. Well, I'm personally very high on this book because uh, I confess I'm something of a fan myself. I remember those films with great nostalgia in uh, the 30s and 40s, and I think, as a matter of fact, the book is going to do very well because I think there's a, a similar nostalgia for old Hollywood going on in America today. Hollywood was a special place, you know, in the old days when a star was a star. It was kind of uh, like uh, royalty, American royalty. Yeah, I agree. In many ways, I think that uh, the film stars of that period are really as close to American royalty as anything that, uh, that we've ever had. And I remember when I was a kid going to the local uh, movie house. I think it was uh, the Montclair out at uh, the west side of Chicago. And if we missed an episode of one of those serials on Saturday, it was a tragic event. You know, we're talking now about the, the, the 30s and the 40s, you know, the golden age of films. Well, the part of the book that I'm anxious to get to didn't have to do with the golden age. This happened about five years ago. I'd taken a sabbatical, so to speak, from, from the picture business that had gone on east. And uh, I ran into these two fantastic, crazy guys. They were producers of uh, low-budget films. Their names were E. Eddie Eastman and Enrico Kodak. And uh, they had produced uh, 16 or 17 of these unsold TV pilots. The first one was called The Enrico and Eddie Variety Hour. Good evening, good evening, good evening out there on the coaxial cable. Yes, it's E. Eddie Eastman here and bringing you another wonderful Enrico and Eddie's Variety Hour. And to start things off tonight, let me bring out someone who needs no introduction to show-going people at all, no. But most important, he's a warm and wonderful human being, my fabulous friend and partner, the wonderful Enrico Kodak and Dinky. Hey, who's working your mouth? Who's working in my mouth? <laughs> you wanna sing a song? Sure I do, kids. <laughs> love him, I love him. How about I hear no one and the music's there? I smell something and there's no one there. I hear flosses and the cheese out there. Oh, my little nice talk on there. I wonder why. Oh, that was really wonderful, Enrico, really wonderful. We'll be reading about that in the trades tomorrow, won't we, folks? Well, it's E. Eddie Eastman here on behalf of the FFA and the National Weird Corporation. Yes, friends, the FFA, Foot Bands of America. So take one or two steps forward, your bodies will naturally follow you. Because what I have to show you tonight is something that will excite you and delight you and make you want to thank me the longest day you live. Item number one. A 16 millimeter color film taken in the girls' locker room at the fabulous Rose Bowl Parade in Pasadena, California. You'll see those drum majorettes taking their feet out of those tight, constricting boots after marching four miles up and down Colorado Avenue in that parade. You'll see them massage their little toes, rub the little crimps out of their feet. Just makes you want to grab them and give them a big kiss, doesn't it? Friends, that's something you'll enjoy the longest day you live. Let's call that one item number one. They made the transition from television to movies and produced a series of sexploitation films. The next project was the first sexploitation musical called These Raging Loins. These raging loins, these burning groins are pounding in my brain. What was that flash, that private clash, our guns go off again. The 
Their next project was a series of low-budget films featuring their comedy star, Dumpo Farkas. The first of the Dumpo films was called Dumpo Rides the Range. Did you hear the joke about, about the cowboy who was playing ping pong and he swallowed a ping pong ball? So the doctor cut him here, cut him here, cut him here, and cut him here. He said, what's the idea, Doc? He said, that's the way the ball bounces. I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> I, I play horses myself. I play the horse so slow, the jockey kept the diary of the trip. Some people play a horse to win, some to play. I, I should have bet this horse to live. <laughs> the jockey hit the horse, the horse turned around. He said, what are you hitting me for? There's nobody behind us. Forget the whole thing. The next Dumpo epic was Dumpo at Sea. I guess he's going to look at wet one. Did you hear this one? There's two guys meet one said, you look very bad. He said, what's the matter with you? He said, I lost three wives in the last three months. What happened? My first wife died from eating poison mushrooms. What happened to your second wife? She died from eating poison mushrooms. I forgot the joke. I'll do it again. Two guys meet. Then they made Dumpo in the jungle. That reminds me of a funny story. The guy calls the zoo. He says, Mr. Lion there? He says, I'm sorry, he's busy now. He's on another lion. Take my alligator, please. The next venture was in the realm of science fiction, something called the Revenge of the Chicken Man. What's happening here? This amazes me to the extent that you are trying to corroborate rather than to elucidate which came first, the chicken or the egg. Fool! Who ever heard of an egg coming? You know what the fuck I'm talking about? Good. Now Thanksgiving can look to its turkeys, but we have been chosen to look toward the chicken. The chicken who comes not from The premiere was quite an event. Slime, no one attended. Everlasting precepts. But yea, the globe itself shall dissolve. And the chicken shall rule. Then the turkey can go fuck himself. The goddamn turkeys. Oh, wait. Clack, 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 clack. What the fuck are they doing? Now we have a chicken. A chicken made from the human fiber. The fiber is important. Fuck that other shit. Even Einstein, in his great theory of relativity, proved conclusively that heating causes expansion and cooling causes contraction. That's why in the summer, the days are longer, because it's hotter. And in the winter, they're shorter, because it's colder. Isn't it true, you little chicken? that when you get hot, doesn't it get bigger? And now the great transformation from the human idiot to the great intelligent chicken. Uh, it's working. Secretary Julie was the only sane force in their lives. It was Julie that ran the office, in spite of the incompetence of her employers. 
Well, it, it wasn't exactly an office. It was an office set left over from their last production, Pussy Patrol. On this particular day, it seemed as though they had reached the end of the line. If the bills weren't paid within the next few days, they were out of business for good. If they didn't come up with a scheme for survival fast, it would mean the end of Enrico and Eddie. And it was at this point unknown to me that our lives would become linked in one of the most extraordinary stories in the history of motion pictures. That's why we in the cesspool that we're in. Because of your nitwit brain that should have been in a bottle at Harvard, you come up with these harebrained schemes all the time and put me right down the toilet. Him, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I deserve a good beating. How about hitting me with a stinging birch? No, I'm really going to punish you. I'm not going to give you a beating. Isn't she sweet? Looks like my sister Edwina. She makes funny pictures, too. She's in the hospital. Remember, she was a... Uh, Working at that big theater as a dancer, she did a split and the liver fell out. It was terrible, you know, it was what they call a compound liver drop. It had not any drop, but one of the other dancers stepped on it with a high heel shoe. I'm gonna listen to you. You cracked. Sticks and stones, Enrico, may break my bones, but whips will rend my flesh. My mother warned me about going into business with you right before she passed away. Playing on the violin, she said to me, don't go into business with him. He'd pull your hair out of your head. No, I didn't listen to my mother's dying lips. Instead, I went into business with you. How is your mother anyway? She's a dead. She died for me going into business with you. That's what killed her. On her dying deathbed, she looked up at me, those little shriveling lips saying, don't go into business with him. Oh, look. Oh, for crap's sake. Look at this. Guess who passed away? Your mother? She dead, I'm telling you. Don't you make fun of my mother. You make fun of my mother, I'm going to kill you. I take you, I slit you from here to here. You're not gonna have your deviant head on your shoulders. Don't make fun of my mother. Here, look at what happened. Poor Jimmy Monahan. I'll read to you from the paper. Jimmy Monahan passed away while doing his tap dancing act on his xylophone in South Africa. Eddie. Too bad he wasn't on our picture. We'd be two million dollars richer. We couldn't finish the picture, sure. That's what they call insuring the production. Mm. Let me ask you a question. Um, if, uh, if, uh, we hired an actor on our picture and they say something happened to him because of age, like he was running around a lot, and, uh, something happened, like, where his whole system gave out because, uh, he was doing a lot of physical stuff. And he uh, expired on our picture. Then they pay. That's, they have a name for that that you pay. The premium. Two million dollars they'd have to pay off. Hey. Hey. Uh-huh. What's the matter, Enrico? You got gas again? No gas this time. This time the bubbles are up here. This time I make a contact. This time I think I got the answer to all of our problems. What the star means the most to you when you were a kid? How about uh, Annalisa Heals Hurt? I liked her. She was my first wife. 
Were you married to her? Oh, yes. You didn't tell me that. 1936. You married Anila Hills Hurt? Mm-hmm. How was she? Not bad. Yes, yeah, she give you... I mean, she's a pretty... Hmm? Well, we stuck things in each other's body. <laughs> you can tell me, huh? <laughs> so long ago, Enrico. Like, uh... Yeah, like she left me for a whack master sergeant during the Second World she War. She did, huh? mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She loved the old Stupa. <laughs> oh, come on. Go down the list. Yes. You really knew Annalisa Hills. Oh, yes. First wife. Really? Mm -hmm. Where'd you meet her? I met her in the Penny Arcade on 43rd Street. Hey, Martin Lips. How old is he? He's, uh, let's see, this, uh, the book was published in 1938. Mm. Mm. He was 75 then. He's a hundred and something. Duke of Montana. Oh, he must be dead. Page 94. Let's see, page 94. Between 93 and 95, I think. Here, here, here it is. Hey, here's his picture. Look, like he was now, like he is then. Fantastic. Duke of Montana, famous Western star. Now we're retired in the lap of luxury in the New Rose Shelf. You got his number? Yeah, I'm going to dial it. But I don't want to confuse him. I'm not going to let you talk to him. See him, get him down here. You work out like you do with the siding and shingles. That way you can give him a good pitch and get him down here. I'll get the extension. He might be thrown by my voice. Hold it, it's ringing. Okay. Hello, Mr. Montana. This is E. Eddie Eastman of National Siding and Shingle Corporation. Your home has been selected from a group of 20 in your... It's all right. It's off. It's off. I, I click. I clicked it. It's off. It's off. It's off. Why did you tell him that? You told me to give him the shingle pitch. No, I didn't tell him to give you the shingle pitch. I told you to call him up and... Maybe we could sell him some siding. Uh, there. Now, when he answers, you say something. It's ringing. Hello, Duke Montana. E. Eddie Eastman here. Look, we're very interested in getting you back into the movies. We're making a big movie. You always wanted to get into movies? What about all the movies you did? That's it. You never did any movies. You never did any movies. Isn't this Duke Montana? Not Duke Montana. Oh, Dick Montana. Dick Montana. He's a dick, Montana. Well, look, Mr. Montana, your home has been selected by the E.K. Aluminum Siding and Storm Window Company, and we're very interested in penetrating your area. And we've selected your home as a model demonstrator. No, it's a film company and an aluminum siding company. And, of course, the work will be done at court. How much will that be? How much is the insurance premiums? It's a... $18,000. That'll be $18,000 in costs. But of course, we're going to give you a free gift with that. It's your four piece set. You get your chopper matic, your slice away, the orange juicer. You better offer him something bigger. He's and the gonna... spiral knife. That's and by golly, what you do with that set is nobody's business but your own. Take your chopper, for example. That's good for your salads, your slaws, your chopped ice or chopped nuts. You'll get used from that one. You'll thank me for it the longest day you live. We're going to call that one free gift number one. Surely that's worth 18000 alone, isn't it? You will go for it. Okay, we'll have the gang up tomorrow to examine the premises and install the siding. You're also getting free aluminum storm windows and doors for your entire house. You'll never paint again. Thanks, Mr. Montana. We'll see you tomorrow. 18,000, Enrico. 18,000 this stiff is going for for siding. I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see it. Enrico, wait. Use your head. How can we talk them out of the four-piece set?
this is it. There's only one the William in no Rochelle. But if it's another roofing, siding, and shingle prospect, I'll turn it right over to you. This time, I'll give it a class opening. Three. Must be a big place. Hello? El Montana? El Montana? Yes? This is Sinefonia Pictures. Yes, hold on a minute for this to come back. Hold on till he gets the cup out of his mouth. Hel Hello. Is this William Montana? Elias Duke Montana? Well, uh, buongiorno, Mr. Montana. Guess who's speaking to you from this end? Duke? You should be sitting out there in New Rochelle, out there with the crocuses. You should be up there on the gold and the silver screen once again. When the West was the West. When the tumbleweeds were tumbling and the wind... <sighs> what the blowing over the plains. <laughs> Went the sick coyote on the desert. Now you know what's out there. Loneliness as you travel across the prairie land. Clipping the clumpity with the horse. Lula <laughs> went the horse. Now, all of a sudden, up from behind the mountain comes the sun rising. Whoosh, says you. Wow, it's a daybreak, and you break off, and you ride across the plains. I want to show you riding across the plains. I want to see the vistas, the valleys, the gorges, the great the canyons, all the colors. Never before could we show them on the screen. You and that putrid black and the white the shit you've been in all your life. I'm going to put you up on the white screen with cinema scrum and the study of funny clowns. And I am going to make it all come to life, real West. You and I are going to show the West on the screen the way it has never been seen before. And you and I are going to start shooting this picture Monday morning. Where? The 72nd Street Transverse near the Central Park. You know where the tavern on the green is? It's near the merry-go-round. We'll meet there with the cameras and the work our way west. Well, I, uh, I can't start on Monday. What are you talking in your head about? Well, it's going to take me, it's going to take me about, about four weeks to line up my business, you know? You're going to line up your business. I, I need a month to straighten out my affairs. What do you, uh, what are you talking? Are you kind of a nut? I'm going to make a cinema. I'm going to bring the great Duke Montana back up to the silver screen. And you're talking about closing up the candy store. I don't understand you, Duke. I've been giving you the opportunity of a lifetime. <laughs> a month, huh? One month. Mm -hmm. Well, what's it got to be? Got to be. <laughs> Son of a bitch.
Gentlemen, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> what are you taking? Count pills? <laughs> That's good. You drink out of the fountain of youth. <laughs> I told you we should have got your ex wife. Is, uh, what is uh, your name? Senor Heinrich Gonzalez. And where are you from, Heine? From Argentina, please. Are there a lot of girls in Argentina? Never mind if there are a lot of girls in Argentina. Of course there's a lot of girls in Argentina. What do you think down there? A bunch of leaping fairies? Of course they got the girls. They got the girls everywhere. Now, will you stop with the girls? You must, uh... Forgive my perverted friend for asking you if there are a lot of girls. It has no rhyme or reason. You didn't come down here to tell him whether there were a lot of girls down here, did you? So you don't have to know what you got. You perverted the deviate. You're now playing with yourself when an old man that comes up here. You must have forgiven my friend. He plays with himself. No. Everyone does. Please. I don't. What do you mean by that? Everyone does. There are a lot of people who don't play with themselves. A lot of people are just as satisfied in the playing with each other. They don't have to play with themselves. Now, will you quiet now, please, so I can interview this guy? All right. What are you doing here today? I am uh, here, and I want to be director. I want to... Zurich, <laughs> Zurich, you know, in show business. <laughs> I want to be, I used to be big director. I, I, I like pictures and I talk to people, to crew, to actors, to extras. Meine sehr verehrte Damen und Herren, wir müssen arbeiten all together. Jeder, der zum Schluss ein Feind im Kanischen Fuss, dem kann nicht passieren, auch man kann mich nicht stören. Oh, that's uh, my kind of thing, if you want me. He's uh, some kind of nut. He's not all there, Enrico. That's why I think he's uh, perfect for us. I like him. You hide. Mr. Kodak, would you like to set up the first shot now so that we can get started? Is it a wide or medium shot or what? Well, what does it say in the script here? Don't Let's see. It's about Don't wide enough to what? fill up the whole screen. Don't it's you think so? Whatever you want. Is this the part that's you a, wrote here? Yes, yes, that's a silent. That's it. Yeah. I'm all Russians right. marching into Berlin. No, no, Kurt that's... Kurt Jergens walks to the... What is this? What is that? That is insert. I'm making the Western here. You're making the Russian Revolution. The whole Russian Revolution. That's out. Oh, yes. What can I do? Ah, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. You want something funny? No, I don't want nothing funny. There's nothing funny about the man who's going up the side of a mountain having a coronary. I mean, having a look of the Indians. What can I do? You have money, you do yourself. All right, now set the scene. The cameraman, come over here. Go ahead, listen to Enrico. I want something cinematical but not too dramatical. Okay. You understand? Something characteristic, but not too dramatical. Something that will capture the hearts of the viewers as they sit in the theater. Not too dramatical, not too cinematographical, but more theatrical. And with a lot of girls. There'll be no girls. This is the West. 
I want you to capture that on your film. I want you to capture the loneliness, the cold, the bleakness. I want to capture the fucking aeroplane and kill it. We can't have aeroplanes in the West. Why not? Because they weren't invented yet, you forgot the crowd. What are we doing here? This is asinine. Take off the coat, the Duke. It didn't have a coat in the Wild Wild West. Besides, this is the top of the Colorado Buttes. Run up the hill now. You're looking for the Indians. That's it, the Duke. Okay, now run down the hill. Run down the hill, Duke. He's running down the hill. Okay, you run up the hill. Duke, run up the hill. That's it, Duke. Can you get him to run fast, Eddie? Hey, Duke, run down the hill. Well, Duke, what do you think? It stunk. That's what I thought you'd think. I think, uh, I think you fellas better calm me out. Oh, no, you don't. You have iron clap contract with us. You can't step out nowhere unless you want to hear from my lawyer. Now, wait a minute. I want to tell you guys something. You can't make a Western picture out in Central Park. You gotta have horses. Why didn't we have horses? The cop didn't show up. What's the matter? Don't, don't you fellas have the money? Well, it's not exactly that. It's just we got ours spread out all over the place. It's all tied up in insurance premiums. I see. What would you, what would you say if, uh, if I took over the production? You have that kind of money? Well, yes, I can cover it. And I'll tell you something else I'll do. I'll cut you in for 10% for your equipment. I'll take care of all the below-the-line costs. How about that? You got a deal. And you'll use our production company? Why not? Joe Franklin speaking, the same as every day, twice a day. We come into your homes, we give you our Joe Franklin show, and we try and spotlight as much memory lane material as we can. The best of the past, proving that the past is not passe. Very much in the present, although he was originally in the past, as my super guest tonight making a comeback, and his name is Duke Montana. And there's a super guest for anybody's show, Duke. Joe, it's uh, sure nice to be back on your show after all of these years. How many about? Well, about, uh, about 15. 15 years. I want to say, Duke, from the bottom of my heart, and I couldn't be more sincere about this, on behalf of all of your fans, millions of devoted fans, welcome back to the movies, welcome back to show business. Well, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure glad to be back making a film again. You know, uh, well, maybe you don't know, Joe. I, I live in New Rochelle now. I'm in, uh, I'm in the cookie business. Cookies? Yeah. Right. We make cookies, and uh, I haven't been active, although it's been in the back of my mind. And the producer of the show uh, got in touch with me some weeks ago and uh, decided uh, that I was the guy to uh, work in this film of his. I'd be very happy right now if Mr. Montana would introduce to our audience and to me two of the industry's leading young producers. I've never had the pleasure of meeting them officially, Mr. Montana, but if you would be my guest introducer right now, take care. Fine, fine, Joe, I'll do that. The, uh, the one on my right is uh, Enrico Kodak. Well, thank you, Joe, for allowing us to trip down your memory lane. All right. And it's awfully nice to be here on behalf of myself, Enrico Kodak, motion picture producer, and my right-handed man, E. Eddie Eastman, the great E. Eddie Eastman entrepreneur. Yes. It's a pleasure to be here. We just want to say hello and thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Well, it's my pleasure. I, I want to tell you that uh, what you've done for this man, and it, it took you two to bring him back. It and most certainly did. Yes. We wanted to bring back his star, bring someone back who was meant to something dear to millions all over the country. We wanted to take someone who had been on the top and had fallen to the bottom, to raise them by the collar and bring them up. 
It was a toss-up between him and Howdy Doody. I was wondering if we could maybe uh, get some flash reactions. I'd like to mention a few key names and see what comes back to you as I mention some of these key names. All right, just just. Oh, you mean going back to the old days? Going back to the old days. Yeah, down, okay, fine. Down memory lane. How about Johnny Weissmiller? Johnny Weissmiller. Fag. Bad. Big fa fag. Fag. We had him in the picture. We wanted Stone to get... Stone gay, Joe Franklin. He went skipping down memory lane. He didn't walk down memory lane. Stone gay, Joe Franklin. I can't I'll tell you that. that. I don't agree with him. Oh, Rick's rough trade you over can, 8th You can you. tell. You can... You look up on the screen. Oh. Any guy with a body like that who goes, oh, 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 had to be queer. You kidding? You kidding? He's only kidding. Tell him... They're talk kidding. talk about some of them other like... stars you knew. Yeah, him. who else, Joe? Is that, is that your entire comment now on Johnny Weissman? Oh, no, no, I don't agree with him We worked with the great and the near great. We did. We've been around, Joe Franklin, you know what I mean? Just because we never met. You know, you talked to my sister, Ed Wiener, about four years ago. Wanted to come on your show, remember, with that whip act? Do you remember her? No. Well, let's not get in. She He's called you once. It was a... Right. I told you not to get Thursday, in. I think. This is a soap. It was about four years ago. Yes. About this time of the year. Joe, you remember a fellow by the name of um, Glenn Strange? Yes, he was a pretty strange. I used to see him all the time. You remember Glenn, don't you? The strange one. Never heard of him. But the one on 42nd Street, Glenn, oh, remember? Oh, Strange Glenn. Yes, it's yes. terrible. He had the boils all over his mm -hmm. face. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, you know what he got that from, don't you? Toilet seat? No, he, well, how would he put his face on the toilet seat? That doesn't sound right. That's why they called him Strange Glenn. Well, he was strange, all right, but... You know who he married, don't you? No. Big Tits Mildred. Oh, come on. They didn't have any kids, did they? Yes, they did. Oh, really? It was tragic. They had a, a young boy died of terminal acne. Well, that figures. He had boils all over his face. Strange Glenn. I would love right now to call this part of our show flashback time or memory lane time, boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen. We'll turn back the hands of time. We'll roll back the sands of time to the days when Mr. Montana was kind of a newcomer, and he was a big box office star. He was the king of his particular studio, and for a real memory lane thrill of thrills, we go galloping down the old Hollywood trail, possibly a quarter of a century ago, to watch the ever youthful Duke Montana. What's the idea? Don't you realize when Blair finds out your life won't be worth a nickel? What are you going to do? See that Blair doesn't get back here? After all, you are my sister. Oh, it's you, huh? What happened to Blair? I ain't telling you nothing. Now, look, Frog, my only interest is to stop him. Can't you understand, man? Carol's in this up to her neck. Probably head off the boys and go after the wagon train. <laughs> that was through the magic of old film clips. That's very nice of you, Joe. Uh, a lot of the uh, things that you, sh you just showed on, uh, on your screen there, on your monitor there, were pictures that I've uh, forgotten. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you one thing. We'll never forget. We'll never forget. Now, I I'll tell you what I need from you, Ted, if you'll do it. You're, you're free, right? Yeah. I want, you to get, uh, I want you to get a couple of the boys together. Mm-hmm. Uh... How about Jack Durham? No kidding. Oh, that's a shame. Really a shame he was a great guy. How long ago? Twelve years. Boy, time sure does fly, doesn't it? Look at all the uh, background, the mountains and different areas here. Oh, and this is the only western town that I know of. Uh, in the United States, you can get off and shoot a mile away, uh -huh. or two miles away. Most of the other places are in close. We've got 1,600 acres here of canyons and uh, old homesteads and mines. We've got wagons. We furnish all the wagons and buggies that you want and uh, right. all the riders. Hello, Billy. Hello, Mr. Reeves. Hey, you're Duke Montana, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. I used to see you in the movies all the time. I see What's you at Tarzan. What's your name? My name is Billy. Yeah, Billy, nice to know you. How long have you been out this way? I've only been here a couple weeks, but travel around the country, you know. I mean, try something different, something all the type of work we want, you know. 
I don't hold steady jobs. You know, I'm more or less to work a while here, work there, work there. Geez, I really like you. I saw you at Tarzan, and I saw you, uh, and uh, when you first started out as a Western actor, then you faded out, you know what I mean? Uh, you're going to make a movie here? We're making a Western. Oh, that's wonderful. Geez, I've always been a great fan of you. You know, you're one, one thing you got there, Duke, you know? You can vibrate uh, a vibration, you know, like magnetism. And I sort of admire that in you. And I think that'll be a big picture with you coming back like that. Well, I like a picture that has a lot of interest. Can do four or five things in it. You know, makes you sit there. You know, you don't want to leave your seat because you you got to take a piss, but you then you uh, piss your pants a little bit <laughs> because you don't want to leave the seat. You know, and I love a picture like that. If you can make a picture like that, boy, with your mechanism, boy, you got it made. We're very happy to see that you're back once again in the cinema firmament. Yeah. And making the flicks like you used to make them. I can only give you this one little bit of advice, Duke, that uh, you perform the way you did those many years. They looked up on the silver screen and... Now, now, now wait a minute. What, 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 what do you mean by that? Well, by that, I mean when you perform, give it all. Give it your heart. Give it your, your, your whole being. In other words, do all the stunts yourself. Do I... all the stunts myself? I think that would be only fair to your fans who love you and, and, and pay to see you. That you, you get right in there and do all the stunts. None of that phonus baloney stuntman, Jack. I mean, uh, don't use any doubles. Is of that the idea? Of course not. Oh, well, Duke, I think this is definitely a debit to your public that you have to repay. All right, now, you as you reach for the, uh, as you, as he reaches for the, uh, for the loop there, that's when you the get noose, that's when I'm going to get him, right? And then I'm going to hit him like that. And I'm going to backhand him and drunk down the hand and kick him over like that. And then I'm going to shoot a guy up here, right? Yeah, but you guys put a lousy rehearsal. If you're going to do it like that, we'll be here all day. Well, you got him all over the street. Just don't stand there. Help me out. Don't fall off. All right. That's it. That's it. Am I on? Is he wild? Yeah, can you handle him? Oh, I think so. What's his name? Shippy. Shippy. Gee, he's big for a pony, isn't he? Yeah, he's a little dusty. Mm. But well, he's wild. I'll take him out. Which side? You've got to get on this side now. All right. Go around. I think you can handle him. Oh, I Don't think... Don't be bareback, you know. Well, maybe you could just hold me a little. Okay. Okay, there we go. Oh, boy. Hold me, hold me! Yeah, Will you hold me? Oh, you got it. Okay. All right, there move you out. Move nervous. out! You're not nervous now, are you? Put your hand around okay. my waist. All right, you're not okay, nervous now, are you? Up we go. All right, one, two. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Here. Where's your reins? Where's his head? Yeah, I guess you thought I was a dude. <laughs> yeah, goddamn. Mm -hmm. Looking good. Yeah. Boy, you handle that horse good. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. Just not Watch, watch the turn. Steady, steady, steady. Watch on the turn. Don't make him sharp. Easy does yeah. it. Watch for stones. The horse shouldn't trip or anything. I suppose you guys are all wondering why we're gathered here at this table. Enrico, I'm wondering why we gathered here at this table. I thought you'd never ask. Pull in. Generally around, I don't think it's going to be too tough a deal. I mean, generally around the set, you know, there are a lot of drinks poured. People are working hard. They oh, they like their beverages. They, they work so hard, they all have beverages. Yeah, they get thirsty. Oh, they get thirsty. Every I, I get thirsty myself. Do you really? Oh, I leave, need a quenching drink every once in a while, Enrico. Mm -hmm. I usually take orange aid, sometimes lemonade. I don't care what you take. It's what the Duke is going to take. Now. I have a little something I brought down from the drugstore. To help their thirst? Yeah, you see, they have a lot of problems out here out west with the rodents running around, eating up all the garbage. So, I got a little this here. I told them I'm having a pest problem. And I asked the man there, the apothecary, if he couldn't put a little something together so I could get rid of a pest of my own. He came up with Is your worms bothering you, Enrico? Not my worms, you stupid, skinny son of a gun. But we are going to get rid of Duke Montana with this. Strychnine. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now. I'm going to go over to the Duke and say, hey, Duke, you look a hot and a tired, maybe you're thirsty, huh? So when he orders a drink, whatever it is, I'll order a drink. 
whatever it is. But I'll order whatever he don't order. Now, you got that straight? You're both going to have a drink. That's right. Now, you take this and put a couple of squirts. In fact, uh, why be cheap? Give it the whole shot into the drink that he's going to have. Now, I'm going to order a drink that he isn't going to have. In other words, whatever I drink, he's not going to drink. But whatever he has, I'm going to have the opposite. Now, you got that straight? I can't have a drink? No, because then if you order a drink, it might be the same kind of a drink that he orders. Because when I order my drink, it's going to be opposite from what he orders. Well, wait a minute. What are you going to order? How do I know what I'm going to order? I'm going to order what he doesn't order. If he has a Coke, I'm going to have a root beer. If he has a root beer, I'm going to have a Coke. I'll have a Pepsi. You're not going to have nothing. You're not drinking with us. We don't want three to confuse the issue. If he has a Coke, I'll have a root beer. If he has a root beer, then I'll have a Coke. If he orders an orange drink, then I'll have a Coke or a root beer. Don't order the orange drink. It Why not? It isn't good. I had some yesterday. I don't care how good it is. The fact still remains, this has to go into his drink. Don't you understand me? If I have a Coke, he'll have something else because I'm going to order what he doesn't have. Don't you understand what I'm talking about? You're going to order what he doesn't have, so you're not having a drink. That's right. I'm going to have a drink. The whole purpose is that I'm going to drink with him. That's why he's going to have a drink. You're going to come over and say, have a drink, you guys. It's hot on the set. Then I'm going to order what he don't drink. Because when he drinks what he has, I can't have the same thing. Because when you put this in that, It'll be the same, and we won't know which one has this in it. And if I think what this is, would that be, would you... Uh, would you listen to me? I got to keep my cool here with you for a minute. Enrico, mm. Enrico, I understand. Let me lay it out. All right, please. He orders a Coke. Uh -huh. You order a root beer. I put it, the poison in the Coke. That's right. You order a Coke. He orders a root beer. I put the poison in the Coke. Coke. No, you don't. I'm going to have the Coke. If I have the Coke, you're not going to put the poison in the Coke. Because if you put the poison in the Coke, then I'll drink the Coke. And you know what that'll mean? You'll be doing this all by yourself. I'm having the Coke, you put this in the root beer. If he's having the root beer, you put this in the root beer. It's so simple. Any nitwit 42nd Street idiot could do it. Now, explain it once again to me. He's having a Coke. Maybe. He's maybe having a Coke. Right. You're maybe having a root beer. Perhaps. But you're not going to have the orange. No, I'm not. I might have the orange if he has a Coke. If I want the Coke, if, don't you understand? Wait, don't, don't be mad. I'll tell you what. I'll make a little plate of sandwiches so when the two of you are having a drink. We're not going to eat sandwiches. We're not going to have anything but Coke. I'll make you a nice New York sandwich, Enrico. I don't want a New no, York please. sandwich. Right I want Broadway. a Coke. Right from Broadway. Corned beef white, heavy on the mayo. I'm going to send you back to Broadway without a plane if you don't get this straight. Now listen to me. If he wants a Coke, you give me a root beer. If I order a Coke and he takes a root beer, you put this in the Coke of the root beer. You put root beer in the water, son of a bitch, you cocksucker. Buongiorno, Sempredoro. Hi, Enrico, how are you doing? Uh, hello, good to see you, too. Okay. Uh, doing a little homework, eh? Yeah, production costs, whatnot, you know. Uh, yes. How well I know. Movie business is like a big toilet. All the money just goes to flush down the toilet. <laughs> uh, yes. Thank God that's off of my back. <laughs> I don't envy you one bit. No, no. Well, 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 look who Hi. come here. Hi, my partner, 
E, Eddie. <laughs> How are you, Eddie? Oh, I'm fine. Yeah. But isn't it warm today, boys? Oh, it's warm. I'll bet your bodies are tired. I bet they itch, ache, burn, swell, and throb, don't they? You know what I recommend? What's that? A nice cooling beverage, or as we say in the trade, your soft drink. That's a good idea. Hey, Duke, how about it? You've been working out in the hot, broiling sun. Hit the big down your brain, sure. Duke wants a drink. What are you gonna... What are you gonna have, Duke? It does matter. It does matter. What are you gonna have? I'll have what, uh, what you have. Hey, don't you want to be an unconformist? <laughs> Why don't you have something else? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll have a Coke. <laughs> the Duke, he's gonna have a Coke. And what are you having? That means that I'm gonna have a root beer. Now, the Duke is going to have a Coke. Uh-huh. And Enrico, you're going to have a root, root beer. Root beer. I'll be right back with the beverage. Okay. Don't forget, the Duke is gonna have a Coke. I'm going to have a root beer. <laughs> hey, that's nice what you write there. Let oh, me sitting see up that. Porch, Can I see that? that? Oh. Hmm. You doubt that your eyes are funny. Let me see your palm. Look at that lifeline. Huh. Here they are. Oh, what's that? Cooling beverages. Hmm? Cooling beverages. Uh, thank, thank you, you thank Eddie. you very much, Ed. <laughs> Sempre d'oro. That is good. <laughs> Come on, Duke, you drink yours now. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't like the root beer too much. Oh. What do you mean, you don't like the root beer too much? I, I never drink root beer. That's a Coke. No, that, uh, that's a uh, root beer. That's, that's a root beer. Then this must have been the Coke. You gave him the root beer, you gave me the Coke. You gave him the root beer. <laughs> Give me the cog. <laughs> oh, I guess he was just stricken with the heat. Maybe uh, make a note that uh, maybe we can use this uh, blacksmith place in the heart there and whatnot for something. Okay. Oh boy. Duke. Yeah. Are you nervous about tomorrow? I don't know, uh, I don't know whether I'm nervous or not. Uh, Fifteen years is a long time, you know. Uh, come on, let's, uh, let's go on back down, okay?
ready. Okay, let's go. Get this plate. Okay. 27-6, take one. Sound C-100. Get out of there. Action! Do you know what that is? Huh? Well, I'm telling you what that is. That's a gun holster. Do you know what these are here? They're the blank bullets. That's right. That they use in the movie. Correct. Score yourself three points. Do not go past go. Do not collect two million dollars. Because blanks aren't going to kill the Duke of Montana. Yeah. But... They will. Are these real bullets, Enrico? You betcha. Boy, somebody could get hurt. <laughs> I wonder who that'll be. <laughs> Take the actual tobacco out of an ordinary cigarette. And from the TNT, I open the top and I gouge out some of the gunpowder. Yes, this very high explosive will certainly give our friend Duke Montana. <laughs> what are you crazy? You want to blow us all to kingdom come? Oh, I enjoy a cigarette once in a while. Shut up and let me do this. Now, I take this like this, gentlemen, and I carefully load it into the cigarette. <laughs> this is what you call a joint. Give me the uh, nitro. Take your time. Bring him on in. Now, send him over any time. Drop him, now. All right. Back up. Let me have you. Get in there. No, 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 no. She's all right. Huh? All right. How is well, he, Marco? She's all right. Hey, beautiful. Yay. That's beautiful. Oh, all right. Oh. Right. Oh. Right. Oh. right. What's the pistol? Oh. Where do you live? Look great. Right. <laughs>
Keep coming. Turn around there, then over the press purpose, and that'll be the end, and there will be two million dollars in uh, the hole. <laughs> hey, look, there he is. Hey, Doc! Come here! Okay, now, nobody can sleep. Yeah, what is it, Andy? Hey, Bob? how you doing, Doc? I feel fine, fine. Good. Listen, uh, we got this uh, team of horses for you. How yeah. about that, huh? Yeah, they look pretty good. Yeah. Oh, they're wonderful. I just checked them out, four and a half. Yeah, this is the shot the way you go to the country store, remember, yeah, pick up yeah. the goods. So, uh, why don't you hop on the board and uh, take it out for a trial spin, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Have a good trip. Yeah, a wagon's a hoe. Here, 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 here. Money. <laughs> huh? I'm okay. He's okay. <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> He's okay. Are you okay? <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> this isn't wonderful. <laughs> Shit. He's okay. He's okay. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's okay.
As everybody knows, the picture was a smash hit. I was back on top again, you know, the big star. I not only had a had a whole new career, but a fringe benefit. Hi, Hi darling. This is Julie, my wife. Hello. Hugh Hefner. Oh, Playboy. how do you do? Yeah. Uh, Very nice to meet you. My pleasure. And whatever, uh, whatever happened to the boys? Well, when I found out what the boys were up to, I decided not to prosecute. After all, they'd been responsible for my comeback, responsible for Julie here, you know. It's uh, them that, uh, that introduced me to Julie at the outset. So I had the judge uh, turn them over into my custody. Come with the drinks today. Got big fat one there. That's Enrico Hello, and the little skinny guy, you. Hey. The little squirt. He's, uh, Hello Eastman. there, Duke Montana, my favorite, the motion depiction star. Come on with the drinks. Come on with Cooling the drinks. Cooling beverages. Yes, the beer of the root and the milk of the cola fish. Mr. Hopman. It's happening, happening. It's starting to One for you. Mr. Hepburn. Uh, no, put that one back. Try this one here. You'll like that better, I think. Right. And one for Miss Julie. Miss Julie. There's no bride. Miss Julie. She Julie. drinks that one. That's and your... Yes, no. that. Mm -mm. Is this mine? That. That. That one. In the Coke. Mm -hmm. The Coke in the root beers. And I'm getting the root beer. And you get them the black cherry. Well... May I produce a toast to you, Duke, the wonderful Duke of Montana, who, of course, took us from lowly movie producers and brought us up, raised us up to wait us here on your state. <laughs> to this wonderful rise up, we salute you and your beautiful bride, ex-secretarial person, Miss Julie, the wonderful, beautiful girl I once loved to stop. Much. And to you, Hoffman, and all of the girls with the flashing white thighs, you know, they have little fat toes. Jim. I know what they look like. Will you stop with your perverted talk and just to toast the folks? Do you love? And of course, to Mr. Hoffman. To those wonderful childhood days back at the Montclair Theater on Saturday afternoon. One more, Duke. One more good You'll to You'll never swallow. understand, you two birds. I don't like root beer. Root beer? That's a Coke. No. Root beer. <laughs> That's what it is. Excuse us, please. Let me tell you twice the time. The coke is on the left. The root is on the right. I think the root is on the right. 